So this week is Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Week and I thought, you know what, let's do a little cheeky q and I asked you guys on Instagram and Facebook to ask me any questions regarding cystic fibrosis and moi. So here we go, the first ever Q&A on this channel. The first question is, I struggle to keep on top of nebs, any tips? Yes, routine is key, but before you get into a routine, you need to be reminded. So R&R, &R, rock and roll, but routine and reminder. I do struggle to do my uh, DNAs and my hypertonic saline. The other ones I'm pretty good at, I do them all the time, easy peasy. My DNAs and my hypertonic, that's what I get a bit confuzzled with. Does anyone say confuzzled anymore? I don't think so, just me. So what I do to try and remind me, I have an app on my phone called MediSafe and you can put in your medication and it will remind you at a certain time every day. If you want it every day, you can change the sort of time settings and yeah, it'll just sing, send a little notification to your phone saying have you done your medication today and then if you don't do it 15 minutes later it'll be like did you do your medication yet and you're like oh, okay i'm gonna do it now i'm sorry something that i love about this app is that you can see your weekly adherence in a percentage the only issue is is when you forget to tap yes i've done my medication and then it thinks that you haven't done any medication for ages and you're like no i have been doing it i've just forgotten to I'm really forgetful like that. But MediSafe, try it out if you haven't already. Let me know in the uh, comments below if you got any apps. Moving on. As a kid, did you try to hide your CF or did you tell people about it? I hid it from everyone, <laughs> as much as I could. It got kind of tiring in the end. I mean, I've done so many posts and videos on it, but obviously I'm a little bit more open about it now because I'm doing this YouTube q and I am an open flower, an a flower, open book. I can an encyclopedia, and though I'm not that clever, so just an open book, you know, standard novel. Anyway, so a couple of you have asked, what's the best thing about having CF? So I think, personally, the best thing about having CF is the um, appreciation that I have for life. I know that sounds a bit of a, like, a cheesy, wheezy answer. Cheesy, wheezy. <laughs> CF, wheezy. <laughs> it's not funny and what I mean by that is that I appreciate my time I do not take it for granted for example I did an office job once and I remember on the first day I was sitting in front of this computer screen looking at all of these numbers doing whatever I was doing and just thinking to myself what the hell are you doing doing something that I do not enjoy what is the point in doing that this does not fulfill you this is not using your time wisely kate i was right i only lasted four days and then i left never did officer work again and there's that really famous video by alan watts you've probably all seen that i'll leave it linked below really recommend you check it out because i absolutely stand by it don't know what that was am i a brownie scout now i'll leave the link in the description box below if you want to check it out Another really good thing about having CF is the excuse to eat food. Um, I use this excuse all the time with Tom. For example, Tom goes, oh, there's only like three biscuits left in this packet. And he's like, should we go one and a half? And I'm like, well, I've got CF. I need the extra calories. I might as well just have them all. And he goes, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Works every time. So, works a treat. Excuse the pun. <laughs> Someone else asked in the same question, what is the worst thing about CF? Physically, the worst thing for me is coughing. I hate coughing. Coughing all day, every day. All day, every day, is that a song? It should be, it's great. Not coughing, the song. Like for example, when you're in a cinema and you start to feel that little tickle at the back of your throat and you're like, oh wait, here we go now, here's a coughing bit coming on and you're just like trying to hold it in and then you're like coughing in like really loud scenes. Physically, that's the worst thing about CF. Mentally is the uncertainty. The uncertainty of where I will be tomorrow, where I'll be on a week's time, in a month, in a year. You just don't know CF, do you? Could just come along and take you down like a snow plow in a snowstorm. I need to work on my metaphors. Is that a metaphor or a simile? No, it's a metaphor. I need to work on my English, don't I? In relation to that, a few people also asked, what is the worst and best memory regarding your CF? So, the worst memory. Let's start with that, shall we? I thought about this long and hard, and um, it's quite hard to pick one, to be honest. There's, a, there's quite a few, as you can imagine. Um, one of the worst times, one of them, was when I had a bronchoscopy, and I woke up during the bronchoscopy. So bronchoscopy is where they stick a camera down your throat, into your lungs, have a look around, have a nosy about, and uh, take some samples, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But I woke up 
during mine. And I remember I just had tissue over my face, it was covering my face, and I had, like, my mouth was wide open. I could feel uh, something down my throat, like a big tube or whatever. I just started coughing, but of course I couldn't cough properly because I had a great big camera down my throat. It could have been a small camera, I don't know. I sometimes, like, get flashbacks to that moment of, like, being claustrophobic and camera down the throat and just being like I can't breathe properly and and there's like bright light shining in my face and stuff yeah that wasn't very nice best memory regarding your CF so when I opened up to people on Facebook the response that I got I was just overwhelmed overwhelmed and people who I used to go to school with commented on it saying this is amazing blah 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 and it was just this massive relief, massive weight off my shoulders. I could finally just be myself. And another really great thing, it's gonna sound cheesy again, is starting up this channel because it's given me projects to work on, to focus on. Yeah, I love that I can use my creativity to turn CF from a negative into a positive. It's like that, what do you call it, a catalyst or something? The thing that turns something into something else. I'm sure there's a scientific word for it, I don't know. Did I listen to science? No. Okay, what happens if you don't have enough crayon? And we're gonna talk about poo here because poo's great and everyone poos. Even the queen, even Beyonce, even Beyonce's dog. I know when I don't have enough because I can feel like there's pains in my stomach. So malabsorption is when it's all, it hasn't absorbed very well. That's not the technical term, but it is a term. But yeah, one of the common signs of malabsorption is getting that urgency to go to the loop. Like I need to go right now. Otherwise, all hell's gonna break loose. Who knows what's gonna happen if I'm gonna make it out of this alive. <sighs> oh God, I don't know. But yeah, there you go. Thanks for your question, <clears throat> Tom. Anyway, what is the biggest challenge you face with CF? Probably at the moment is uh, my mental health. Because when my brain doesn't wanna do anything, it's having an off day, I struggle to do my uh, physio. I struggle to do my nebs to keep on top of all of that stuff. So it has like a knock-on effect with um, with sort of the physical stuff as well. What is your FEV1? My FEV1 is 75% currently. Funniest CF related thing that you've experienced? One of the f funniest moments was when I went to my annual review. Dad always, always comes with me to do my blood tests. Long lines, whatever it is. Here's the one who takes on the needle and be like, yep, yeah, that's fine, he, like, he doesn't mind needles. My mum, she runs out the room and gets herself a coffee, that's fine. But dad he is always there with blood tests. Unfortunately, on this particular year, my dad couldn't make the uh, the annual review. So my brother was like, oh yeah, I'll step in. This was like when I was in paediatrics, so I can't remember how old I was, maybe 12? So we get to the hospital to do my blood tests and go into a separate room. My brother's with me, he's like, yeah, you can do this, Kate. And like, so, so I stick out my arm like this and I don't know, maybe I've got like three nurses around me looking at me, I'm oh this one's a good one and then you know poking around and Rob's listening to them do it all, I've heard the chat all before you know and then they try and get the needle in and they're like oh needle's not quite going in this vein, it's, you know you need to tap it or whatever. I can just see him going like this because <laughs> this is listening to all of them talk about veins and bloods and it turns out that was the moment he realised that he has a very strong needle phobia and he almost passed out and then all of a sudden all of the nurses except the one doing my blood test rushed around to him he was gotten a, a drink of water and um, we're making sure he was all right and i'm just like all right okay dad safe to say that he has never come back to do a blood test what would be your top tip for parents of a child with cf great question so my top tip would to not wrap your kids in bubble wrap, not literally, obviously, metaphorically. <laughs> like, let them go out and play, let them go out and experience the world. Don't like put those boundaries around where like, no, you cannot go anywhere because you need to stay safe at home where there's no bugs and bacteria. Just let them be kids, just let them have fun because you don't want them to, to feel like they're any different from their friends. Wrapping them in bubble wrap is, is gonna make them feel um, like they are different and they're not normal and that will probably have quite a serious consequence mentally on them. That's what I would suggest. Just let them be kids. 
let him have fun. But obviously there are like certain boundaries to that, isn't there? Just don't just let your kid go AWOL. Just like, yeah, go on, off you go, have a riot. And they come back and they've actually gone to a riot. Can you tell us your morning routine? I've done a whole day in the life video which will go through my morning routine, my work, my treatments, and that's pretty much it. So I will leave it linked up here and down below if you would like to watch that. Um, it's, a, it's a smashing video if I do say so myself. I was thinking of doing like a raw vlog rather than like a creative vlog. Just doing a raw vlog. Take you around my day. Hello, this is me. Taking some pills, yay. Could be really boring, I don't know. But if anyone's interested in that, let me know down below. Okay, what's the biggest misconception from other people about CF that most annoys you? So growing up, I was always, always told to eat as much fat as I could, eat as many calories as I could. So you want to have that extra Mars bar? Have that extra Mars bar. Yeah, go and eat that donut over there. That'd be great. Put on weight, it's great. It rhymes and everything's great. That does not rhyme. Anyway, over the years, that's what I was sort of trained to think like, and my parents also trained to think like that. So yeah, they would always encourage me to eat that sort of stuff, but now that I'm older and I'm learning more about it, especially recently, it's not about having bad fats, it's about having the good fats. So, your nuts, your avocados, that's all I can think of at this present moment. I still need to work on that bit. But the biggest misconception is that I need to eat all of this bad crap food um, in order to gain weight, when that's not true. You can do it the healthy way, still gain weight, hopefully, fingers crossed, and feel better for it as well. Like I've talked to quite a few people recently where they say that gluten makes them feel bloated, it makes them feel a bit crap. Having dairy makes uh, the mucus thicker, so I've been trying alternatives to dairy. It's a long-winded answer in there. I hope that answered the question. I think it did. Is there one thing you would really really love to do but can't due to CF? I mean I'd love to fly to the moon. Probably couldn't do that because of CF. You know think of all the, the missed hospital appointments. Um, think of all the pills I'd have to take on the on the spacecraft. Yeah not really viable. Um, going to the moon, so I've crossed that off my list already. All jokes aside, there is actually one thing that I would really, really, really love to do, but can't do due to CF, and that is to meet other CFers. Simple as that. I've said it before in a video, I'd love to go down the pub, meet a couple of CFers down there, have a chat with them, be a right old hoot. I have genuinely have a good chat, a good natter with some of them, and it's just great. Um, and it just sucks that I can't meet them. Tom, do you have any questions for me? Why such a I think it's time to end the video there. Thank you so much for all of your questions. Um, I've actually really enjoyed answering all of these. So uh, if you have any more questions, then drop them down in the comments below and maybe we'll do another one of these in the future. Who knows? Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna because I make all kinds of content, mainly about cystic fibrosis, but sometimes about other things too. Oh, the mystery is there. Ooh, I am a bit crazy as well. If you couldn't really tell, check out those other videos, subscribe if you wanna, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.